HGTV. <laughs> Hello, I'm Matt, and we are continuing our series on immigrants. With this series, we are speaking directly to immigrants to get their stories, their particular immigrant experience. On today's show, Jessica from ECTV is interviewing Miguel Rodriguez. Hello, my name is Jessica Llamas, and today we are here with Miguel Rodriguez, and we are going to be interviewing him on his experience of being an immigrant in the U.S. Hello, nice having you here. Thank you. So, um, where are you from? I'm originally from Mexico City. When did you come to the U.S.? Like, how old were you? I was seven years old. When did your, uh, since you were seven years old, when did your parents decide they had to leave? Like, what was the event, something that happened? Yeah, so uh, my mom, my parents were divorced, and my mom used to work for the chief of police in Mexico City. And at that time, there was a, a wave of kidnappings going on. So my brother and myself were kidnapped. And uh, when we were recovered, my mom decided that uh, we had to leave. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people are willing to take like such huge risks, like they risk their lives, like their children's lives, just to come, um, just for a chance to live in the U.S.? I think it's because of the opportunities that are here, right? Because of um, access to resources, right? Access to uh, public education. Uh, a lot of times in uh, you know impover impoverished countries we don't have uh, you know free uni universities or we don't have um, health care or even uh, access to basic things like water you know and uh, so it's coming here is uh, becoming stepping up in society you know and, and also yeah. uh, achieving um, stability that sometimes doesn't occur in our home countries um, what do you think uh, immigrants bring to the U.S. in terms of, I don't know, something to enrich um, mm -hmm. the U.S.? Um, well, we bring a lot of things, right? We, we bring um, what you call values, no? We bring uh, the, the notion that, um, you know, we bring family, we bring culture, we bring uh, tacos, right? <laughs> we, we bring uh, uh, just great um, hardworking ethics, no? And I think that for a lot of uh, society, right, um, it's it's kind of refreshing not to have these um, these immigrants that come in here and we bring uh, different experiences, um, but also because we tend to do the the work that uh, people don't want to do, right? Absolutely. Here, the natives, and so um, you know, we we come here with uh, the need, but also the uh, capacity to do uh, strenuous labor sometimes, you know. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you want to mm -hmm. see some of like the hardest working people that mm -hmm. work like crazy shifts, you go to the fields. Mm -hmm. You see these people like in mm -hmm. any condition, they're just mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. Now that you've been obviously you've been like a, uh, in the U.S. for many years, would you ever go back? I think that um, I've made this my home, like many immigrants do. Uh, we've contributed to this country and and we um, are you know in love with our neighbors and with this country and we uh, have you know gotten ourselves in a in a place where we have become part of the society you know and uh, to go back and start from zero again is uh, you know, it's it's unthinkable. So yeah. I think that's why a lot of people opt to to stay. And then also, um, you know, um, you're used to even just the the, the systems, right? Uh, I mean, in Latin America, they measure everything in meters, no? Yeah, definitely. And so you you know you don't want to go back to a place where you're gonna be uh, making these conversions on a daily basis, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I'm not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you kind of like create a life for yourself here and then just being deported just kind of throws everything off and just makes, basically like you mm -hmm. said, it makes you, you have to start from zero all over again. Yeah, and, and you know, that brings us to a, a, a good uh, point, right, that um, there's a lot of immigrants who are living on a daily basis uh, with this fear of getting picked up and deported and families are being separated and uh, there's these things called uh, mixed status families, right? Where one person is in the in the household is of legal status, and maybe uh, other people in the household aren't, right? And yeah. especially uh, for 
a lot of recent immigrants, only the children are, are citizens. So yeah. imagine if one of the parents gets picked up and deported, then the whole uh, stability of the family gets taken away. Definitely, because I know I have family members. Um, my little cousin, she's I think she's eight year old, years old, and she was telling me how she was like, she was like, I'm so sad because um, my classmates are upset because they have to go back and their parents have to go back and they have nowhere to go. And to me, it was just so upsetting that this little eight-year-old girl had to like think about that and she saw that. Mm -hmm. And these kids have to worry about mm -hmm. just being without parents or what to do next. And they should not have to be worrying about that as a kid. Yeah. Or and then, even as an adult. Yes, and part of the immigrant experience as a, as a child no, is usually uh, you become the first in the family to acquire the language. No? Mm -hmm. And so you get into these responsibilities, right? So like, for example, in my household, uh, I was the one that opened the mail and I read it and I interpreted it to my parents. And, um, you know, there's times where I was the one that was making car deals or I was, wow. you know, buying appliances and I was like 10 or 11, right? So uh, it's a, a lot of imposed uh, responsibility. Definitely. Um, but also it's, it's um, it, ha it has helped me a lot by becoming a, a pretty good interpreter. Yeah. Like you can um, you can get earn skills from practically anything. Yeah, I guess. like you know when they say it goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah. Uh, actually, mine goes in one ear and out my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So something we're hearing about in the news a lot right mm -hmm. now, especially um, today, is the caravan coming from Central America. Um. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, we are living in an age where um, a lot of the economic policies of the United States uh, have been um, finally uprooting people from their homes, right? And so, for example, a lot of these military interventions that we've imposed in Latin American countries have made it so that we've not only pulled out their resources, right, but we've also uh, made it into a place where organized crime and, and gangs thrive and, and that's one of the reasons or one of the roots of uh, migration and uh, you know when it gets so bad that you're more willing to walk 3,000 miles with your child in your back than to try to you know um, farm you know it's it's really bad yeah things have gone to a point where it's just incredibly difficult obviously and they have to make very um, hard choices. Yeah, and, and uh, one of the bigger things here is, is just that people would rather stay home and live their lives in comfort and security in their homelands, but unfortunately it's become so violent um, and so corrupt in some of these countries because of the governments that we've imposed yeah. that they have no choice. How do you think we should address the root of immigration, which is all this corruption in the government? That, w yeah. Well, I mean, I think that uh, every time that we attempt right uh, an economic policy, we have to do so so that it's uh, bilateral, right? So that both sides are in talks or in uh, di diplomacy, right? Uh, uh, throughout U.S. history, it's been very unilateral. And so uh, that's how you end up with these um, embargoes, right? Like for Cuba, or how you end up with um, these uh, dictators that we that we impose, right? That we put into office, and and we destabilize the country. So, yeah. Um, what do you think are some stereotypes? Obviously, like the northern border and the southern border. Why do you think they're there? Yeah, you know, it's it's funny that. Um, you know, that in this day and age, right, we, we spend most of our resources trying to build a wall on our southern border when uh, in our northern border we we have like one uh, immigration agent every like three or 400 miles. No? And the reality comes along with uh, what we call the rising cost of catching a Mexican, mm -hmm. right? It's um, this uh, big industry of uh, paramilitarization along borders to try to keep people uh, subjugated and people 
um, you know, and to punish people, right? And, and to fill uh, what we call our detention centers, no? because ultimately there's these corporations that are funding detention centers for immigrants, and uh, yeah. it's at the point where even children are being detained for, uh, as you know, in, yeah, in, the, in the last awful. few months, right? And so, you know, it's, it's a, not only a political issue, but it's also an economic issue, right? And uh, unfortunately, there are these corporations have uh, direct access to our lawmakers who see it in their best interest to make them money. Definitely, that's mm -hmm. a big problem with us. Um, can you tell me, since we're on the topic of like stereotypes, can you tell me about like maybe some stereotypes you faced as an immigrant? Yeah, you know, uh, racial profiling and, uh, you know, when I got my first car, I remember that I used to get pulled over almost on a weekly basis, no? And a lot of times um, it was just for bogus reasons, no? And uh, also um, another stereotype that I've uh, had to deal with throughout my life is, um, you know, having to take whatever occupation was offered even if I was overqualified. Uh, for example, I used to work at a retirement center in the, in the restaurant area and uh, I had my, my, my associate's degree and I had more education than even the, the manager there, but uh, because of who I was and what I looked like, uh, I was put in as a busboy and a dishwasher for, you know, and I had to work my way up unlike other people that you know, uh, d perhaps didn't look like me or didn't yeah. have the same profile. So. Yeah, it's just like so terribly, it's just so terrible how people can just make assumptions based on how you look mm -hmm. and they just put you in a certain place because that's where you're supposed to be because of your race or mm -hmm. just yeah. all these different factors that but don't the, matter at yeah. all. The, sorry to interrupt, but the, the cool thing about it is that you learn to develop a sense of um, of self-worth, right, and, and self-esteem, but also you realize that uh, you are uh, developing and becoming a new and unlikely leader with everything that you do, right, whether it's at the workforce, right, working your way up, or at school, uh, getting these degrees that people wouldn't expect you to have, mm -hmm. um, and even, you know, in your, in your jobs. Absolutely. Um, what is a message that you want to send as an immigrant? As an immigrant, I think that I would like Americans to know that um, immigrants bring more and add more to the quality of their life than uh, what they get credit for. Uh, immigrants pay taxes, immigrants pay uh, disability and social security, which are safety nets for the rest of Americans. Uh, which are benefits that they will never be able to cash in, right? And how do we make people more aware of immigrants and obvious the suffering that they go through and make people more sensitive to it and more accepting in general? Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of those things, right? We, we live in a society that uh, has not taught us to be empathetic, right? We have been taught that there's only one winner and everybody else is a loser. Right, we live in a society where uh, if you're rich, you've made it, even if you may not have any moral characteristics or, or any values, no? Um, and, and it's when you have those elements uh, forming and dictating the dialogue in society, then it's very hard to, um, you know, take into consideration the other person's plight, no? And I think that uh, for a while there was a push for, um, what you call equity, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that everybody not only had access to equality, but also uh, there were opportunities for them to be able to, you know, improve their personal situation. No, and so um, a lot of that has kind of gone uh, to the side or fallen to the side with uh, the current political uh, structure. But um, I think that we can still. Um, bring this perspective through race and class analysis, right? Through having people realize where they're at as far as, uh, you know, privilege, as far as, uh, you know, potential uh, benefits, right, that they may be getting from, say, for example, uh, cashing in Social Security that, you know, an immigrant has paid for, no? And 
and acknowledging that and, and you know being grateful that uh, there was an immigrant there that was able to contribute for them no? and uh, and even just loving tacos you know <laughs> loving, loving everything that immigrants bring to the table yeah absolutely yeah because I think people um, just need to realize that immigrants don't take away from our society they contribute and they're not just they're not here to um, take our jobs they're here to um, make the United States a better place and they want to make their lives better as well as everyone else's um, today is the caravan coming from Central America um, can you tell me a little bit more about that yeah we are living in an age where um, a lot of the economic policies of the United States uh, have been um, finally uprooting people from their homes right and so, for example, a lot of these military interventions that we've imposed in Latin American countries have made it so that we've not only pulled out their resources, right, but we've also uh, made it into a place where organized crime and, and gangs thrive. And, and that's one of the reasons or one of the roots of uh, migration. And, uh, you know, when it gets so bad that you're more willing to walk 3,000 miles with your child in your back than to try to, you know, um, farm, you know, it's, it's really bad. Yeah, things have gone to a point where it's just incredibly difficult, obviously, and they have to make very um, hard choices. Yeah, and, and uh, one of the bigger things here is, is just that people would rather stay home and live their lives in comfort and security in their homelands, but unfortunately it's become so violent um, and so corrupt in some of these countries because of the governments that we've imposed yeah. that they have no choice. How do you think we should address the root of immigration which is all this corruption in the government? That w yeah. Well I mean I think that uh, every time that we attempt right, uh, an economic policy we have to do so so that it's uh, bilateral, right? So that both sides are in talks or in uh, di diplomacy, right? Uh, uh, throughout U.S. history, it's been very unilateral. And so uh, that's how you end up with these um, embargoes, right? Like for Cuba or how you end up with um, these uh, dictators that we, that we impose, right? That we put into office. and and we destabilize the country, so. Yeah. Um, what do you think are some stereotypes, obviously, like the northern border and the southern border? Why do you think they're there? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny that, um, you know, that in this day and age, right, we, we spend most of our resources trying to build a wall in our southern border when uh, in our northern border we're, we have, like, one uh, immigration agent every, like, three or four hundred miles no? and the reality comes along with uh, what we call the rising cost of catching a Mexican mm -hmm. right it's um, this uh, big industry of uh, paramilitarization along borders to try to keep people uh, subjugated and people um, you know and to punish people right and, and to fill uh, what we call our detention centers no? because ultimately there's these corporations that are funding detention centers for immigrants and uh, yeah. it's at the point where even children are being detained for uh, as you know in, yeah, in, the, in the last awful. few months right and so you know it's it's a not only a political issue but it's also an economic issue right and uh, unfortunately there are these corporations have uh, direct access to our lawmakers who see it in their best interest to make them money definitely that's mm -hmm. a big problem with us um, can you tell me, since we're on the topic of like stereotypes, can you tell me about like maybe some stereotypes you faced as an immigrant? Yeah, you know, uh, racial profiling and, uh, you know, when I got my first car, I remember that I used to get pulled over almost on a weekly basis, no? And a lot of times um, it was just for bogus reasons, no? And uh, also, um, Another stereotype that I've uh, had to deal with throughout my life is, um, you know, having to 
take whatever occupation was offered, even if I was overqualified. Uh, for example, I used to work at a retirement center in the in the restaurant area, and uh, I had my 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 associate's degree, and I had more education than even the the manager there. But uh, because of who I was and what I looked like, uh, I was put in as a busboy and a dishwasher for you know, and I had to work my way up, unlike other people that you know uh, d perhaps didn't look like me or didn't yeah. have the same profile. So. Yeah, it's just like so terribly, it's just so terrible how people can just make assumptions based on how you look, mm -hmm. and they just put you in a certain place because that's where you're supposed to be because of your race or mm -hmm. just yeah. all these different factors that but don't the, matter at yeah. all. The, sorry to interrupt, but the, the cool thing about it is that you learn to develop a sense of, um, of self-worth, right, and, and self-esteem, but also you realize that uh, you are uh, developing and becoming a new and unlikely leader with everything that you do, right, whether it's at the workforce, right, working your way up or at school. Uh, getting these degrees that people wouldn't expect you to have, mm -hmm. um, and even you know in your in your jobs. Absolutely. Um, what is a message that you want to send as an immigrant? As an immigrant, I think that I would like Americans to know that um, immigrants bring more and add more to the quality of their life than uh, what they get credit for. Uh, immigrants pay taxes, immigrants pay uh, disability and social security, which are safety nets for the rest of Americans, uh, which are benefits that they will never be able to cash in, right? Um, immigrants also uh, you know, are innovative, entrepreneurial, right? Uh, whenever you're driving around, you never see uh, a homeless immigrant, right, uh, uh, standing on the corner panhandling, rather you see them selling flowers or yeah. or oranges, right, or working mm -hmm. these these jobs that are um, you know very tough and and so um, one of the things that I think that people should also understand is that our current immigration system uh, was made to keep some people from Latin America uh, out, no, and yeah. that's why. Uh, these quotas, um, you know, that are imposed on people that are Latinos, uh, you know, it could take 20 years for somebody to get a visa, whereas somebody from Europe uh, could get, it could only take two years, right? So yeah, it's really unfair how it's just mm -hmm. all put together. Um, what do you, I know we kind of like already touched on this, but what do you say to people who think immigrants come here to cook? commit crimes because I know a lot of people make generalizations like because you're Mexican they think that you're not going to be able to achieve as much or mm -hmm. that you come here to do drugs or to commit to do all these horrendous mm -hmm. crimes which is obviously not the case. I think that uh, one of the prime examples is unfortunately there was a, a, a shooting that just took place uh, you know the night before last no and uh, this happened here in, in suburban Thousand Oaks, and uh, it was not an immigrant, right? It was someone who was trying to kill, who was obviously, uh, uh, you know, doing, going through some sort of mental illness, right? But anytime that uh, anything happens in society, we always want to scapegoat, right? Yeah. And, and uh, for the most part, throughout history, immigrants have been uh, the scapegoats for a lot of these uh, social traumas. Yeah, de that's definitely, we see that repeated over and over throughout our history, throughout other nations, mm -hmm. and it's just so, it's so sad that we can't see it and address it. People just seem to be blind to it and just repeat it over and mm -hmm. over. Yeah, and, and you know, the other thing that we got to uh, acknowledge is that we tend to provide uh, economic opportunities, right? Like I said, uh, immigrants are um, consumers, mm -hmm. right? We consume uh, a lot of goods, we pay taxes. Um, aside from that, immigrants are always um, what you call uh, social enterprisers, right? So uh, they're always figuring out ways to help out the community. So for example, um, I was just involved in a project where um, this 
people who were always left out of the political structure uh, finally said, we want to be involved. And even though they couldn't vote themselves, they knew somebody that could. And that helped us change the history of, of the city because we were able to get uh, the first Latina elected into Ventura City Council. Wow. You know? And aside from that, you know, they uh, realized that they had power collectively and uh, they pushed for a park uh, on the avenue and they got it. So it's, uh, it's very promising to know that immigrants are not only, you know, uh, doing these things to improve society, but they're actually becoming engaged in civic processes. Absolutely. I think that's really inspiring that all these people were able to come together and create like something so it's huge, right? Mm -hmm. um, one, uh, one last thing is kind of to wrap this all up. How do we make people more aware of, uh, how do we make people more aware that, okay. How do we make people more aware that obviously immigrants are here to work because um, as we mentioned earlier, there's like the stereotype around them just, and like everyone kind of has a stereotype. Okay. How do we make people more aware of immigrants and obvious the suffering that they go through and make people more sensitive to it and more accepting in general? Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of those things, right? We, we live in a society that uh, has not taught us to be empathetic, right? We have been taught that there's only one winner and everybody else is a loser, right? We live in a society where uh, if you're rich, you've made it, even if you may not have any moral characteristics or, or any values, no? Um, and, and it's when you have those elements uh, forming and dictating the dialogue in society, then it's very hard to um, you know, take into consideration the other person's plight, you know? And I think that uh, for a while, there was a push for um, what you call equity, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that everybody not only had access to equality, but also uh, there were opportunities for them to be able to, you know, improve their personal situation, you no? Know? And so um, a lot of that has kind of gone uh, to the side or fallen to the side with uh, the current political uh, structure, but um, I think that we can still um, bring this perspective through race and class analysis, right? Through having people realize where they're at as far as, uh, you know, privilege, as far as, uh, you know, potential uh, benefits, right, that they may be getting from, say, for example, uh, cashing in Social Security that, you know, an immigrant has paid for, you know? and and acknowledging that and, and you know being grateful that uh, there was an immigrant there that was able to contribute for them no? and uh, and even just loving tacos you know <laughs> loving, loving everything that immigrants bring to the table yeah absolutely yeah because I think people um, just need to realize that immigrants don't take away from our society they contribute and they're not just they're not here to um, take our jobs. They're here to um, make the United States a better place and they want to make their lives better as well as everyone else's. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of... Yeah, amen to that. Up. Thank you for your time, Miguel. I am Jessica Yamas and we are ECTV. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miguel, for sharing your immigrant experience. We'll see you next time on ECTV.